Welcome back to another episode of the Know Your Power podcast. I am your host, Julia Renee. And Kendall Aaliyah. And today we have a special guest, speaker, coach, owner of Connect Her Community, hype woman for impact-driven female entrepreneurs, Rachel. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Wow. I'm going to record that. (laughs) Play that back all the time. Every morning. (laughs) Every time I'm feeling a little low, I'm just going to play. I'm just going to play Julia's voice. Yes. Rachel from Connect Her. Rachel. (laughs) <laughs> we turn this into like an ASMR channel. Oh no. Kendall hates that. <laughs> the whispers don't bother me as much as like like the the mouth sounds. Or the chewing. ASMR stuff. Oh yeah. I try to avoid those. T- it just yeah. creeps me out. Yeah. It's a little weird. Yeah. I do it follow this girl out. on TikTok that's like a beauty one and mm-hmm. she just has like the most beautiful face, but then she'll like put weird beauty products on her face. And <laughs> I she'll, feel like I've seen these. She'll open she it. She like holds it up and like yes. casts her nails on it. Exactly. Yes. It's like that. And I'm like, I don't really mind that. But it's when people do like the chewing mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. and the mouth sounds that I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm-mm, not for I me. Not, not, not for not me my either. Forte. Well, that, guys, today is going to be an incredible episode. I already know it because just after watching like some of the things that you do on your Instagram, at least, and how you've impacted so many women and like this community that you've brought, it's really awesome. Because one thing that I know that a lot of girls listening to this podcast can probably relate to is the difficulty in finding other women and like empowered women to connect with without feeling like judged or any of those kinds of things. And so I'm kind of interested backtracking how did you get to the point that you are today like what made you want to start doing all of this Mm, yes that's a really good question also I just want to say I'm really excited to be here um when I first saw Julia she you know so I host events so I can Mm -hmm. tell when someone walks into a room and they feel confident or when they're kind of like what's going on she walked into this room that I met her in (laughs) confident as (laughs) h-e-l-l and she had her heels on her workout clothes it was a good vibe and I was like I need to know that woman Mm -hmm. and now we're here so I'm happy to be here yes I'm so glad I literally dm'd her like the next day and I was like hey yo I want you to be on my blog <laughs> she was like speaking on stage and I was like she looks like a badass up there so I took some videos and then I like went up to her I was like I'll send them to you but I didn't want to be weird and like give me your number <laughs> um, but she did can, we, can we be friends <laughs> can we I always think friends? about like when we were little like how simple it used to be mm-hmm. when we were like it go up to the playground Came your friend, and it was just like, <laughs> We're okay. friends now. You know? And Honestly, we just need to carry that vibe into, yeah. like, now. Mm-hmm. Go to yeah. the gym, find a girl, let's be friends. Like, can and we be friends? Yeah, exactly. It, it should be it that It could be that easy. easy. Yeah, it should, and it could be that easy. But it's so not. And so but going back on what you were asking, yes. um, making friends as an adult is incredibly, incredibly hard. And so uh, that is pretty much what my entire mission is, what I do for women, but it did not start like that. Mm. I was not a girl's girl growing up, or at least I deemed myself as not a girl's girl. So a little bit of my backstory. I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. I was in martial arts. I was like a tomboy at heart. You would never see me wearing pink. I hung out with the dudes. Like, you know, I was that girl. And when it came to having female friendships, it honestly scared me. Mm -hmm. Like I thought girls were judgmental. I thought girls were, you know, just going to judge or make fun of you or you weren't accepted or you had to be a certain way to be in those friends groups and so I avoided it like the complete plague um growing up my sister was really sick and so I kind of was in this like caretaker position where I was always doing things for other people and I was just isolating myself if I had a moment to myself I didn't want to be around anybody I was just it was me and no community Um, fast forward multiple years, moving from Vegas, which is, you know, Sin City, not necessarily the best environment to grow up in, to moving to Texas. My sister was diagnosed with cancer. My sister passed away in 2020. I went through a complete like ego death of my sister was my whole identity. Being Danielle's sister was who Rachel was. And I realized I need to do something to heal myself. I need to find the highest version of myself and start working through my trauma, start working through who I thought I was to create this new version of me or staying that way is not going to be retainable, right? I was very unhappy. Um, And so when she passed, I started doing this thing of like, what would Danielle do? Mm -hmm. What would, um, I call it living for two. So how can I live in honor of her? What is something she would do in this moment? 
And my sister was a girl's girl. My sister was a cheerleader. She was a dancer. <laughs> she was outgoing as hell. Um, and so I started to try to embody that. And that's what really kicked off starting the community that I run and being open to female friendships, which is something I realized I didn't have for a really long time and I deeply needed, but I didn't know that I needed. I'm curious, why do you think that is? Why do you think that you almost kind of avoided female relationships? Because I know that I kind of did the same thing and I also was a wrestler, so I had a community of boys around me because I was the only girl. So I'm curious to how that was the case. Mm. I've never been asked that. Um, I think for me it was, you know, being in, like you said, a wrestler, like being in martial arts, hanging out with the guys. I was always like powerlifting in the boys' football room, like wearing baggy shorts and baggy T-shirts. I had to carry this like overly confident like badass vibe right mm. but then when you stepped into like a dance class that's like kind of intimidating right a yeah. lot of girls mm -hmm. don't carry that energy because you have to kind of carry that energy around men um and so I felt like kind of the out the outcast when it came to those rooms I felt unaccepted mm. um and there was a little bit of bullying bullying there was a lot of judgment there I would also just kind of watch my sister be a part of cheer and I'd see the drama that she'd brought home and I'd be like I want nothing to do with drama yeah um but I do think it was a lot in my own head. It was a lot of just building this thought that that's how it is and not actually immersing myself in it and experiencing whether that was true or not. Do what you, do you, go sorry. ahead. <laughs> what do you think? Cause I am like, also, I feel like all three of us were very similar. I grew up with like three older brothers. Their friends were my friends. Girls scared me. They still sometimes do depending on the, <laughs> yeah. on the woman. Um, and like, it is still something I'm like actively trying to like pursue more female friendships and get used to like that uncomfortableness of like, okay, you haven't been here before. Like, let's, let's get settled here. What do you think are like things you did in the beginning to kind of embody your sister to like, maybe ask a girl to hang out or like go and introduce yourself or like, what are things that you either did like practices on your own or like actually applied? Yeah, it was a lot of practices on my own before even stepping into anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing my sister loved to do was dance. So for me, if something happened that upset me or hurt me, I would retreat to like my bedroom as a child and like talk to myself. I'm like, Nobody, nobody's going to know what's I going on. <laughs> um, my sister was the opposite. She would like blare music. She'd like have a party in her room. She'd be singing at the top of her lungs and dancing and like inviting people in to dance with her. Um, and so it started with like letting, I call it my freak flag, like letting my freak flag fly, like figuring out what brought me joy on the inside and then being that and not caring what anybody thinks. And so I started just forcing myself to like go to a dance class and like, I am not coordinated, y'all. Um, but go to a dance class and like start to embody that and like find joy and just, you know, hype other people up. And then they hype me up and I'm like, oh, wow, that's a girl and she's being nice to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then it led to a lot of inner work of like traumas, you know, writing down what were all the things that I felt girls said to me or people in general said to me that really broke my heart? How did it make me feel? And, you know, what are the beliefs I created as a child that I'm now carrying into adulthood with completely different people that didn't judge me as I was a kid? Um, so it really started with the inner work of it. And then just doing it and just putting myself in those rooms, forcing myself to have conversations. I never would have gone up to Julia and been like, oh my God, I love that you're wearing heels with yoga pants. <laughs> um, but I did. And so kind of forcing myself to do those things, to make those friendships. And then once I started to recognize friendships were being born from it, that's when it just skyrocketed because it felt good. Yeah. And that's a really scary thing to do to put yourself out there and go against that initial fear of like, I maybe I'll get rejected. Maybe yeah. they will look at me and just be like, what is she doing? Because I think that that's a really big reason to why girls don't even like approach each other in the gym. Maybe they love her outfit or maybe they want to learn like what kind of workout she's doing or something. Or they just admire her and they're scared of what's going to happen when they go up to her. They don't know what she's going to say, if she's going to give them a good, like a weird look. And it must it felt really good to do these uncomfortable things and be like, oh, like 
I guess maybe it's not as hard as we think because I feel like we build it up so much in our head and then it's never as scary as we think it's going to be. It's like feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, The most beautiful things in life, whether it's making friends or building a business or anything, the most beautiful things in life are on the other side of fear. And so you have to feel that fear and most of the times it is rejection. Yeah. Um, Where I overcame my rejection. So around the time that I moved here to Texas, around the time that my sister passed, I realized that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I realized I was not meant to fit in the box of working for other people. I was a terrible employee. I don't like being told what to do. I'm sorry. That's just not me. (laughs) I think that employees or like people having a job is so important to make this world go around. Like as a business owner, I have employees and my business would not be sustainable with them, but that was not for me. Um, And so one of the jobs that I took up that was kind of in between entrepreneurship and um, owning a business was door to door and door to door sales, you are getting rejected over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And this was around the time that my sister was also in the hospital right around the time she passed. And so life was like crashing down my confidence, my inner work, like everything just felt so heavy. And I was having to knock on these doors and sell freaking security systems and solar to these random people. And sometimes getting like doors slammed in your face. Like it's the last thing that you want. Getting doors slammed in my face, getting like freaking shot at, getting screamed at. But then the next day it would be like a grandma and she's like, here I made breakfast. But I was getting rejected over and over and over again. And so I think that was really the catalyst to me doing what I do now was feeling the fear of rejection, facing it, getting through it, realizing that rejection has nothing to do with me. It typically has to do with that person Mm -hmm. and the beliefs that they carry. Mm -hmm. Um, And once I was able to really accept that, I was able to use that now into creating community, building friendships, all of those things. Wow. That's awesome. One thing that I wanted to bring up, I was going to say it earlier, but I little bit backtracking, but going back to the aspect of whenever you were, I guess, not a girl's girl and you were surrounded by basically a lot more of a masculine energy when you were starting to do your inner work, because I know this started happening with me when I was a little bit more removed from a sport that was very hyper masculine, even though I'm still on a sport that's hyper masculine. Um, but when I realized like the damage that it had done to me to distance myself from women and to kind of reject that feminine energy, did it come up in your inner work? The difference between you leaning on your masculine as protection versus leaning into your feminine for, um, community, for empathy, for, um, just, connection with women that's more on the feminine side, I would say. Mm, Every day. And it still comes up every single day. I was a very hyper-masculine person where I was always operating out of my masculine. And I think having, you know, masculine side and your feminine side, men and women both have that, right? Um, But as a woman, leaning fully into my masculine is exhausting, right? You're always searching for control. You're always searching for taking the power in a moment or searching for, it's a very achievement mindset, which is so beneficial. Like in sports, it's so beneficial when you're accomplishing something, but with that lack of balance of the feminine side, allowing yourself to rest, allowing, allowing yourself to do the work and like relax a little bit and like get more into your emotions. I forgot your question. Um, <laughs> well, you're, but, you're, you're doing great. You're speaking to <laughs> Keep it, it rolling. Um, I forgot your question, but th- I was very imbalanced for a really long time. And when I recognized the moment that I knew I needed to lean into my feminine side was far different from the moment I actually took action on it. It took mm. a really long time to accept that by releasing control and tuning more into my femininity, I'm not less of a person. Wow. When I'm not achieving, I'm not less. Yeah. When I'm resting, I'm actually, it's going to skyrocket me into accomplishing more when I am in that achievement. Um, so it took a really long time to find that balance. And it comes up every day where I catch myself trying to be in that action mode, masculine mode, mm-hmm. but then allowing myself to know when is a good time to allow others to take control and when is yeah. a good time to, to bounce into that tough side. 
And that's hard, especially with a personality type that's like yours. We're our stories are so similar that it's kind of scary. Um, <laughs> Did I just meet my new? Mother? I know. I was like, do we just become best friends? <laughs> like it's so similar, and like this is still something that I work on every single day, and it's shown up actually a lot for me this week because I overrun myself with work. I add new projects. I literally added another vlog, a weekly vlog to YouTube, you know, just because even though I have so much (laughs) already going on because I love that. I love, I love the masculine energy because it's, it's so good in the sense of getting shit done. You know, it's really good for bodybuilding. And honestly, after seeing the Barbie movie too, and we already (laughs) knew this, The world is run on masculine energy with the grind mentality and the work 12 hours. And all of us have really embodied that and thinking that that is the only route to success. So it's very difficult for somebody who works on that kind of level to realize, wait, so you're telling me (laughs) if I chill, (laughs) if I I relax, (laughs) I can be successful. What a concept. It literally makes me cringe. Like I, because that's how deep I've been rooted in that masculine energy that I've had to deprogram what it means to be successful. So for you, there is a question in here uh, with my rant, (laughs) but I'm wondering what have you done in those moments where you feel like you're leaning into that masculine energy, that grind, that work 12 hours, and maybe even cut off your emotions. What do you do to step into the feminine? And maybe it's like, putting down work or, or emotionally or physical things that you actually do. Yeah. I watched a video the other day and it was talking about rest and working as like a pendulum. Right. Mm. And so when you are constantly working, you're not really going to get a deep rest. When you're getting deep rest, you're then skyrocketed into getting more done with your work time. Um, But if you're constantly operating out of like this, this, exhausted body, whether it's physically exhausted or like mentally exhausted, you're not going to get a lot of work done and you're not going to get deep sleep. And so I like to like picture it in my head of like a pendulum. Like, how am I being today? Like, like how do you think of it literally in your head of like, how far am I swinging to the right of where it's like hyper masculine working, working, working. Do you think of it like that in your brain? Yeah. Yeah. And so what I, What I recognized was when I was extremely in my masculine, because I think achieving is very important. Like we were talking about before, like to be a bodybuilder or to build a business, like you have to achieve. There is going Mm -hmm. to be times where you have to work 12 hours to build your business. And that's not always toxic, right? There's seasons for it. Um, But I was realizing when I was doing that too much, what would happen when I did try to rest is all of my emotions and all of those things hit me like a freaking truck. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, uh, she's we, speaking and i'm like i'm triggered <laughs> julia was julia hit session? that point yes. very recently yeah. yes i hit that point literally once or twice a year where mm-hmm. i swing way too far to the right and yes. it's usually after prep and then finally like i don't have anything to do like i'm not having to go to the gym for three hours and watch every little ounce and then i crash like it happens yeah. to me so often mm-hmm. to where i'm so determined to not let that happen I think it's a form of burnout. Like I, I, I've definitely been there. I think like my last prep, I was like prepping and working the most hours I've ever worked in my entire life. And I didn't know what rest was. And I was literally like crying by the end of every single day because I was just like physically and mentally exhausted and it completely burned me out. And I went to the opposite and started resting more. And I'm like, wow, life is great over here where I get to like be nice to myself. And and that's the thing is like, if we didn't swing so far to the right with work, then we wouldn't have to swing so far mm-hmm. to the left with relaxing to where like you don't want to do anything. Yeah. You're yeah. so in your feelings and like you're you're almost maybe it's depression. Like mm-hmm. that's what it yeah. could look like. So if we just balanced it throughout the year, somewhere in the middle, then we wouldn't hit those highs and lows. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally well, that yeah, easy. Yeah. But it sounds easy, but it is hard to like actually is. apply. I, I can really relate to that. Like I did my prep in twenty eighteen and right after it was like all of my identity was gone. It was like, Mm -hmm. I just left stage. Like, who am I? I don't have to do cardio this morning. Like, um, but I've recognized that you can swing too, 
too far to the feminine too. Mm -hmm. You can allow yourself to rest almost too much where you become a couch potato Mm -hmm. and you, you hit that mode where it's like, you don't want to do anything. But when you find this balance, your rest day shouldn't look like you can't get out of bed and you're so freaking exhausted. You don't even want to shower. Your rest day should look like, okay, I'm going to go out and paddleboard with my friends or I'm going to go out and do something I wouldn't normally do. Mm-hmm. Um, but to get to that point, you have to have balance long term because if you're heavy in the masculine, your rest day is going to hit you like a truck and then boom, mm-hmm. it's Monday again and you got to get shit done. Mm-hmm. Um, am I allowed to cuss on here? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah you're good. <laughs> I was like, I think sure. I did it like 10 times. <laughs> you're like, after Thank the you 10th for asking. One, yeah. yeah, that's okay. sweet. Uh, yeah. Um, the only person that will um, text me is my mom and she'll be like, really? K- Kendall said the F word today. Oh. And I'm like, shut up, mom. I didn't even know that. Just it's wait, you guys will upload this on YouTube. My grandma will be in there. Aww. Rachel, don't use that Rachel, language. Rachel. I really try not saying? to, but like sometimes it just emphasizes the point. It's more me than you really okay yeah. that's our it's, it's, it's more me that's yeah yeah yeah. yeah that's our masculine sure. play. <laughs> um switching gears a little bit to like kind of the present what made you want to take like all these things you learned and start kind of teaching other women or applying it in a sense of like creating a community yeah so let's take it back like three years ago i moved here to austin i was doing door to door i was still very much so around mass i mean Everybody in door to door, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know if the person is your coworkers coming from Yale or jail. Like it's all <laughs> That's men. That's such okay. a good saying. Uh, <laughs> and so I met my business partner and she had a vision specifically to work with women. She was a, uh, oh my gosh, what does she call it? She was pretty much a fitness coach, but more so on the mindset side for women, um, helping them sync their cycles and all of those things. And she had told me this vision and I told her like, hey, I want to get people together. I want to start hosting events. I want to build a community. Um, And she had the same vision, but she was like, I want to do it for women. And I was like, that's terrifying. We are not doing that. (laughs) Um, And so we started hosting events for co-ed. And what we realized was more and more women started showing up. And then over time, it evolved from a men and women community to an all-female community fitness kind of driven to now a female entrepreneur community. So it definitely evolved over time and it was her vision to actually work with women. Um, But through that, I started to see the value in those relationships. I would meet women and we would have really deep, real and raw and vulnerable conversations. And then I'd be like, holy crap, like I just talked to a girl about something that was hurtful and she didn't judge me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And over time it would start to, to evolve. So about two years ago, we started what was called Empower. It's now called Connect Her. Um, And then now it's a community of all female entrepreneurs that are all badass women. I don't even know how it grew. It just grew and grew and grew. The community built it more than we did. Um, But now it's a space for women to get together. And I get to live that dream of chatting with women every day. That's really cool. And I'm, I'm guessing, too, going from being a little bit more masculine and then trying to step into your uh, feminine, this was probably a really big step for you. Because Mm. one thing that I noticed, at least for myself, is that I wouldn't be able to do what I do now if I didn't step into the feminine, especially having a community of women. Like you need that in order to actually connect with people. I mean, your business is called Connect Her and you can't connect to women if you're not in your feminine. So I'm curious what that switch was like for you and how you showed up in relationships when it was a little bit like uncomfortable, but you did it anyways. Yeah. It started with what would Danielle do, right? What would my sister do? I'd literally have full conversations with my sister in the car. I'd be like, all right, Danielle, just like get me through this meeting. Um, And then over time it was recognizing things about myself in every other woman that was there or seeing parts of my sister and every other woman that was there. Um, And it was a lot of, at the end of the day, coming home to myself and actually having to do that work of not jump into the ambitious, I'm going to plan the next event, but diving into what do I feel right now? What are the beliefs that came up? What do I need to communicate with myself? Um, Same with my business partner. That was the first like friendship that I had that was a feminine friendship. And so we had to learn, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this as business partners. We had to learn a lot of ways to communicate our traumas that are coming up for each other so that we could continue to be successful. Um, So I'd say the biggest thing that has helped me and still helps me to the day to this day is just pausing and 
whether it's journaling, whatever it is, really like reassessing everything that comes up and then saying, okay, how can I do better tomorrow? What did I do good today? And taking it day by day. I love Uh, Yeah, I feel like everything you've said so far, I'm like, wow, yes, I resonate with that, but also beautiful. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're talking about is like the power of connection with the other female energies is that sometimes like you can't just go up to a guy and be like, let me tell you about me. me, me, me." You'll be like, I'm having a hard day today. And he's just like, oh God. He's like, I know how to deal with this. Unless you're my boyfriend who's like very connected to his feminine. And for us, at least it's like the other day, because I have a really hard time like sharing how I'm actually feeling, especially with my partner. But it's something that I've worked on for the four years that we've been together. So I've gotten better at it. But I went up to him the other day and he was just like, I was like making food or something. And he's standing there and I was telling him about how I was feeling about my prep in the moment and I was like I'm just feeling like so tired and sometimes I want to just like give up and stuff and he goes he kind of has this little smile and he's like thank you for sharing that with me <laughs> it makes me feel so loved and Zach I was like is adorable. you ruined it I was like you ruined it go away <laughs> no more vulnerability Wait, that's <laughs> literally like me and my boyfriend but in reverse anytime he like shares something with me I'm like oh like should we dive deeper do you want to talk about your feelings and he's like not anymore no. not I literally anymore. was like you ruined it and he starts laughing and he was like no and I was like next time just don't comment about it <laughs> don't comment because you make me want to hide back in my little hole. So yeah, that's been something that we've had to really work on together. So I'm curious with your relationships, how have you guys done that together? Yeah, I think all relationships are the same, right? I mean, if you're with a partner, of course, there's other sides of it, but business partnership, friendships, everything is the same. And it really all comes down to communication. And I have not perfected it by any means, I'll let me tell you, but I'm working at it every day. And it all comes down to communicating every single thing that comes up. Because for example, if you would have never vented to your boyfriend the other day in the kitchen, like prep sucks right now. Uh And then he did something and you snapped at him, he'd be like, why... What is going on? Mm -hmm. But because you communicated and you allowed yourself to be vulnerable, then he's going to be like, okay, she's having a hard day. I'm going to give her grace for this, right? Um, And it goes that way in all of our relationships. One of the things that we do at our events, because we've recognized, you know, hosting events for female entrepreneurs, it can be really freaking intimidating to walk into that room. You walk into a room with 500 women and it's like, is my outfit right? Like, what am I, what's my elevator pitch? It can be really intimidating is to drop your ego at the door. And so how can you do that in all of your relationships? Drop your ego, drop the assumptions, drop what you want them to think about you, and just communicate anything that comes up. Be real, raw, and vulnerable. And when you do it, it allows other people to do it. And that's when those relationships really run deeper. Yeah, and then it's like a domino effect, and it makes it just so much easier on other people. And I love that practice of any door that you're walking into, like going into it with the intention of this is how I'm going to serve. This is how open I'm going to be. And I'm going to just leave my ego at the door. And that can solve so many problems if we all just did that, because we all go into situations almost like with our gear on, like our, our war gear on. So we come in and we're like, acting like somebody (laughs) that we're really not. And then people don't actually get to know the real you. So I I, think I typically go into like a lot of situations assuming the worst or like assuming I think girls do that a lot. Yeah, like (laughs) assuming certain reactions or if that person's looking at me, this is what they're thinking. When in reality, we have no clue what they're thinking. And like I never have those. We've talked about this with like feeling judgment in the gym. It's like when I stare at a girl, am I ever judging her? No. But if she stares at me, I assume that's what it is. So I think it's like putting yourself in other people's shoes, too, and being like, if I'm open and like honest and vulnerable, they'll feel more inclined to be open, honest Mm -hmm. and vulnerable. And I feel like it creates a better environment. It's true. That and that vulnerability takes you so much far so much farther, especially in business, for example. Again, we're working with a lot of female entrepreneurs for our business and the reason why we started hosting events is because, so before owning Connector, I had a marketing agency. So I was still in the networking world. I was going to all these events, trying to make relationships. And what I realized is when I would show up to a networking event and I would sit down and I would be like, my business is a six figure business, a seven figure business. We're crushing it. Uh, There's nothing wrong. All my employees are doing great. Like I have no problems people would be like, okay, great. Move on to the next conversation. It's Mm -hmm. not relatable. Yeah. But when I show up and I'm like, honestly, I'm doing great, but I'm struggling with this one thing. 
that opens up the doors for someone else to be like, you know what? I actually excel in that. Let me help you. And then it's like, oh, well, what are you challenged with? Let me help you. And that's how f- deeper relationships are filled as well. Mm-hmm. Um, even this, you know, me being on your podcast, you guys being on our podcast, like that deepens our relationship because we're able to provide value for each other's communities. But if Julia was never vulnerable and was like, hey, I'd love to have you be here, like call me into something, then we would never have furthered our friendship. Um, So vulnerability furthers relationships and furthers the connection you're going to have with a person far deeper, the help, the value that you're going to get from a conversation. Definitely. And that's the one thing. This is why people say that women should be president because (laughs) we are, there were so much more in tune with the vulnerability aspect and, and empathy. And it really can shift worlds if we're using it to our benefit. I know that the big like switch for me at least was when I was noticing that I was like, oh, the more that I share about the things that I struggle with, the more people feel connected to me. And that's why I love sharing my prep journey and my, on my YouTube channel and all on my Instagram and things that I'm struggling with. And look, there's like obviously a level of like, okay, well maybe I won't share that. Like (laughs) there's some things that you need to keep to yourself. But once I started doing that, like people were connecting with me like all over the world. And I was able to create like a huge community of women that were all had the same values and striving for something similar. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't tap into that. If I would have stayed in my masculine and just been like, bodybuilding is easy. You just have to try harder. And you know, if you're not losing weight, then there's something you're doing wrong. If I would have done that, nobody would want to listen to me. Nobody would care. But if I'm sitting there and saying, Bodybuilding, yes, it is hard. There's some grit and there's grind to it, but you know the benefits that can come from it are incredible. They can impact like every aspect of your life. And, you know, losing weight is not that easy, okay? Like I'm over here struggling and there's things that I have to do that I don't want to do and that connects other people together. So with your community of women that you have now doing, you host events, right? How often do you host your events and what do they look like? Yeah, so we started hosting events every single week. Um, Oh my God. Yes, it was every single Sunday. Talk about burnout, right? Um, It was so valuable because we were able to really see what is it that women need right now. We were able to grow our community. We were able to deepen our relationships. Uh, But we started every single week, and then we realized, okay, we're really exerting a lot of our energy. So then it went month to month. Right now where we're at is we have a ton of virtual resources, online resources, especially since we're expanding outside of Austin. Um, But now we have quarterly events here in Austin. And that helps us be more intentional for our events, show up, as well as it just builds the excitement of like people know what they're looking forward to versus us just going through every single week hosting something. Um, But we do a combination of networking events. Our main thing is connect her. So it's all about connections, right? How can you get connected with your next business partner, your next opportunity, all of those things, really building those relationships. Um, So we have networking events. We also do intentional workshops where we'll bring in experts in different industries, whether that's fitness or social media or mindset or hormones um, to speak and teach the ladies. Um, And then we have all of our online community as well. So conferences, ton of different styles of events. That's so cool. I'm assuming too, like some of these girls that have been in this community, have they like met their best friend or a business partner before? Yes, that is honestly what lights me up the best because so when me and my business partner met, right, we were both running our own businesses separately and we were very lonely in entrepreneurship. And so when we met each other, that was like a relationship catalyst that not only built Connector now, but helped us get out of isolation and vent about entrepreneurship with another person. And so our goal was to create that for other women. And now we have ladies come to us and they're like going to Cabo together after they met. That's they awesome. They like built a business. We have girls on our um, in our community that have like started podcasts together. And it's so inspiring because now to see the ripple effect of the people that they're going to um, impact with that relationship is huge. Oh, yeah. It's like a domino effect. I mean, you're impacting these women, you're bringing them together, they're pairing off and then they're pairing off and it's just creating a huge movement that's going to like go everywhere. Um, On the topic of entrepreneurship, it all seems like super fun and like everybody wants to do it and it's like the best thing ever. And I know that that's how I felt when I started my business, um, literally when the pandemic hit. (laughs) So um, 
What advice would you give to anybody listening right now that's curious about starting their own business that doesn't really want to work for somebody else and has like maybe a really good idea that they're just fearful of running with and being an entrepreneur? Yeah. So there's a really good book out there. I actually just recently read it. It's called The E-Myth. Um, revisited. The, I think it's the second version. Um, but it talks a lot about going from a technician mindset to an entrepreneur mindset. And oftentimes we want to become an entrepreneur. Like I said earlier, like you're a bad employee. You don't want to work for other people. You want to create your own vision. You want to impact people. First of all, what's a technician? So a technician mindset is that entrepreneurial mindset. It Uh is the thought process or no, a technician mindset is the mindset of the employee, right? Oh, okay. It is, I am really good at this one thing. If I have directions, I can crush it. I can create things. I can build things and launch them, Mm -hmm. right? But to switch from the technician mindset to the entrepreneur mindset, what a lot of people don't recognize is instead of wearing seven hats, you're going to wear all 20 hats, Mm -hmm. right? In your business. And there's a lot more that comes with it. Not just talking about like the legals and the building, the launching, the learning how to market, the fixing the problems, the customer service, like all the parts that come into entrepreneurship. And so I recommend that book for anybody that does want to get started to understand like what you're really getting yourself into when it comes to entrepreneurship. I think anyone can be an entrepreneur. It's definitely something you can learn, but you have to be open to pivoting. You have to be open to change and you have to be open to transforming as a human. And that comes with a lot of vulnerability. That comes a lot with putting your ego down and just being willing to learn. Um, So that's the first thing that I would say. But truthfully, I think that everyone has a unique light that they're meant to share. Everybody is meant to impact other people in this world. And oftentimes the way that we're raised or the way that we're taught in schools is to kind of fit in a box and not share that. And so whether it is to be an entrepreneur and create your own business, whether that means writing a speech and being a speaker and stepping on stages, whether that means just posting on social media and inspiring the people that follow you, I think everybody has a unique light that they're meant to share. Um, And that's something that more and more people should be told in this world is to put themselves out there um, because your vibe will attract your tribe and you are meant to impact other people. I love that. That's so great. And I think a lot of people think that they don't have that. Like there's something that you're right now, listener, listening to this, and there's something that you've already thought of. There's something that popped up in your mind that you're like, I really want to do that thing. I have that spark. It doesn't matter how seemingly big or how seemingly small it is. It's there's something out there that you can do unlike anyone else can do. And the the description that I always like to use, my little sister is my virtual assistant. And she literally, I could not su- function, survive if I didn't have my little sister oh, whatsoever. She also could destroy my life in two seconds if she wanted to. <laughs> she runs her whole like podcast she page, everything. Everything. Oh like she... She's just got that I thing. I need to hire your sister. She's, she's I the also best. plan she's, on hiring her she's, sister. She is um, open for business. She's the best virtual mm-hmm. assistant literally out there. So creative, all of these things. And the thing is she, she has that spark, that thing that I just, I don't have or I don't care to learn and I'm not naturally good at. But she has that and she has impacted my life, thus impacted everybody listening to their lives. And she's a virtual assistant. She could stay at home. She could work anywhere. She could do whatever she wants. And then I have my mom. She's a hairstylist. And every day she goes in and she's working from however long she wants to however long she wants to get off. And she's impacting these women, making them feel beautiful, listening to their stories about their kids or their partners and stuff. You can impact people. These are three completely different jobs. And all of them are impacting people around their community in so such completely different ways. So it doesn't matter what it is. We're not telling you like go out and like be your entrepreneur, do this and doing that. Whatever it is that's giving you that spark, yeah. there's a reason. Yeah. God, the universe, whatever you think, whatever you believe in, put it there for a reason. And most of us just don't. I'm sorry my dogs are making so many appearances <laughs> I today. Think it adds character Guess to so. the podcast. Yeah. And that's the thing. We're not gonna edit it out because yeah. We're just so raw and real. <laughs> and real so authentic. Raw, we're just like so authentic. Yeah, but mainly because it's too difficult. 
yeah. but yeah i think a lot of people like know that's their calling too or like have yeah. certain inclinations and they feel like it's not the right time or what if i fail and those are the things you kind of have to like lean into or in like what you said before with like the best things in life are sometimes on the other side of that like fear or failure or whatever yeah. it is and i completely agree i feel like it applies to like entrepreneurship and relationships both it people really talk does. a lot about the fear of failure nobody talks about the fear of success mm -hmm. and that is a Bruh. real thing Bruh, that's, a, drop. that's a real thing. I'm struggling with that a lot. It's a real thing. And that's where self-sabotage can come into play too. Mm -hmm. If you start to make the money that you desire, if you start to build the business that you desire, you start to be the best employee possible and impact people the way that you want to, no matter what that is, there's going to come a point where your mind is like, oh my God, am I deserving of this? Am I yeah. worthy of this? Mm -hmm. um, and it all comes back to doing that inner work, which is kind of leaning into that femininity of like, what were the beliefs that you were taught as a child? When were you told that you weren't worthy? When did you create that belief about yourself? Um, and how can you work through that so you can show up to impact the people that you are meant to impact, no matter what that looks like? Like hairstylists, right? The world would not go around Bro. if I didn't have my extensions in right Same. now, right? You need them. We need them. And so there's, you are impacting people no matter what you are doing, but you are going to be the only thing that will hold you back from that. That's very true. Have you guys ever seen the movie Soul? Oh, yeah. From yeah. Disney? Yeah. Okay. At least eight times because my boyfriend like <laughs> loves to watch it. <laughs> I've only seen it once. Time. But yeah. Okay, I cry every time. But that's a meditation that I like to like use a lot is close your eyes and really picture like at the end of the day, all this little stuff doesn't matter. At the end of the day, like what is the life that you want to live? And if you are not living that life, there is a fear that you have to work through to get to that point. And you yeah. are so worthy of doing that. It's just a matter of really understanding what that end goal is and going full force at it. Feel mm -hmm. the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. One thing that I notice, at least when the fears start to pop up, it's my cue. That's exactly what I have to go do. Yeah. Which is like annoying <laughs> because you sit there and you're like... <laughs> Because I had this like great idea the other day of like something that I wanted to do business wise and immediately comes the, the fear, the, what the if, worry, the what, the if, what yes. ifs, the planning, the, the worthiness and the things. And I was like, I have to do it. That means I have to do it. I have to run towards it. And look, this doesn't mean that you have to like, uh, the, the example that I use is when I wanted to leave my salon job because I was a hairstylist for a couple of years before I do what I do now. And look, I wish I could tell you I threw my papers off, gave my bosses the middle finger and left. It's You can't do that in some situations because you, know, you need to pay rent, you need to eat. <laughs> yes. So I worked on my side hustle, which is what I do now at night when I would leave the salon and then I like would dwindle down the days that I work so that I can eventually go after this thing that I wanted to do. So taking those little baby steps to get yourself to the point where you can leave that job, you can leave that relationship and doing it little by little instead of just because like, ah, that's what I did. I just sometimes get really impulsive and I'm just like, no, I'm done with everything. It's all, I'm all, I'm just done with it. So I love that feeling the fear and doing it anyways. And it kind of goes back on the conversation we were having earlier about um, women, right? And p judgments coming in as a child, right? Whatever you were bullied for growing up is probably your purpose, right? Like, I was bullied for being bossy. Yeah. So you are meant <laughs> like to be a boss, a boss bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh my god <laughs> truthfully like i was bullied for taking control and always like if i had a, a group project i wanted to be the person to present i wanted to be the speaker and a lot of people would be like no rachel uh-uh that's not you um and i was bullied for that and now i look into it like what do i love doing the most is speaking i'm curious what was the thing that um, you were bullied for? there's a few and it's weirdly like as you were speaking, I was like, wait, that's so true. One, I am very sensitive and I am very like in tune with emotion and my brothers would constantly like dog on me for it. And now my biggest connections are like, I'm an in-home trainer, that's the business I own. And I have clients that come to me with their mental health questions and issues and they cry during sessions. And like that emotional side of me is how I'm able to like relate with them and have empathy with them. and create like my own form of change with them so like the thing i was bullied for from my brothers tied into that also weirdly body image 
all the time. And that's something we speak on my brothers again, like constantly, like you're um, gaining weight. You're I need blah, to blah, talk blah. to your brothers. Yeah, <laughs> they weren't the, ne- like they would always play it off as like, we're just joking, but like, I'm a little girl. They're all older We all me. did like, that to our siblings. Yeah, yeah, right? We all did. Um, but like looking at it now, that's something we talk about all the time is like accepting who you are, loving who you are, body acceptance. And also like, okay, if you are unhappy with something, here's what I did to like improve my my own image of myself and stuff like that so both fields I went into I guess so what are the odds mine was just your bossy (laughs) mine was like you're sensitive which is the complete opposite and we both use those in what we do it's so true we're the complete opposite people but somehow we're best friends I think that's what makes it work and also just to share because I don't think you know like our history talking about female friendships we met and like then didn't talk for like a year and a half and I like I was in like, my head, she's I was cool. Like, I was like, I loved her. We like did a workout, never talked again. <laughs> <laughs> and now here we are. And then a year later, we were like, maybe we should. We didn't like hang out, but I think, I think we, we like, worked out. it was like a group workout or something. Uh-huh. And then like we got closer and closer and yeah. it was just like such and a long time. And then we started time. like traveling together and now like we see each other once a week for the pod. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but those relationships were like so hard for me to go after because again, like I think our dynamic of you being that like stronger more quote unquote boss (laughs) bossy um personality and me being very sensitive like it was always so intimidating because I always looked up to women like Julia who are very strong presence like you said when she walked into the room when you first met her you were like she like demanded the attention of the room which I always looked up to and I always wanted to have friends like that but that was like the exact personality that terrified me and now having Julia in my life and like getting to see the, the, I guess, counter side and see the thing she is open and honest and like struggle with proves to me like, oh, they're just human too. Like, why was I so intimidated for so long? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Not to hype you up. <laughs> That's so nice. I love this. <laughs> I love this. That's awesome. And you know, what's crazy too, with this podcast, we have been able to meet more incredible and powered like you, your, of course, yeah. you yourself too because we're doing this podcast than ever before. I have never had this many female yes. friends in yes. my entire life as I have since we started this podcast. Even every guest we've had on, like fully different personality types, but all of, I think we have, we've had one or two men, but most, yeah. most have been female and every single one I'm like, oh, I love her. Or like yeah. I connect to her in this way that I didn't know was possible for me. And yeah. like all of them are very different, but still prove that true. And even like, find like, running into listeners in public, like I instantly feel a friendship with them because I'm like, oh, we instantly connect I'm like, oh, you know me. Yeah, I'm like, oh, you've heard all of my embarrassing you know. stories. <laughs> you know all my You stuff. know all the things. <laughs> and you still accept me, which is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like what you guys are doing is huge too because you guys also lead a female community. But what we don't recognize sometimes is like our podcasts and stuff are being it is the first step for friendship for a lot of these ladies. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not ready to immerse themselves in a whole event, but they listen to this podcast and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I have these friends that these ladies understand me. I can listen to girls and be relatable with them. Yeah. Um, Without having to talk to them quite yet or see them quite yet. Right. It like, it allows them to step into that while also leave putting up that wall of that boundary. Um, And so, your podcast is impacting people. So is yours. Right now, in this moment. <laughs> in this moment. <laughs> what is your podcast called? If the you Connect share Her about Podcast. It? And do you typically have guests on? Yeah, so our whole thing is taking real, raw, vulnerable to the next level. So how can we connect the listeners with experts in different industries? And what we do when we interview those experts preview Julia's about to be on there so this is what's about to go down it's about to go down. Uh, but we we talk about the vulnerability side of building your business or the vulnerability side of getting to where you're at today because oftentimes on social media right Instagram is a highlight reel there's a lot of beautiful things on there but you can go to somebody's page and be like oh wow they're successful they own a yacht they this mm-hmm. they that well we want to say okay this is where you're at now but what did it take to get there what were the challenges that you faced what did you have to overcome what was the inner work um, to really help our listeners work through their things and see that they can be relatable with all these people they see online. Yeah. yeah. Showing them every step-by-step thing that got them to point A to point B yes. instead of just looking like the highlight reel, yeah. Yeah. which I love. And Overnight which is cool. success is not real. Yeah. At least I feel like social media is moving into the more vulnerable side. I agree. I, I, I feel like so people too. are, we are moving into that direction. There's still a little, a level of, 
a veil, which I feel like we all still do, even though I share some of the most like raw and deep things like on my sh- social medias that sometimes I share them with them first before people in my life. Yeah. But there's still that level of like safety and security that mm-hmm. we keep. But I feel like we're moving into a really good direction, which is awesome. I think that 100% comes from COVID too, because everybody was That's like true. locked in their homes. And so they went from being an autopilot all the time to like being forced to sit with their feelings. Oh, it was a yeah. huge pattern yeah. interruption. And so they started to really connect with the people that were relatable yeah. to them versus like the fancy cars and yachts and stuff. Yeah, um, well, They were able to like go search for those people yeah. instead of be quote unquote stuck with a community that maybe they didn't like, like the amount of people that quit their job. I started my business and, and in 2020, like the amount of people that literally like quit their job, left relationships because you had time to pause and really think about like what actually matters. Do I love doing what I do? Do I love this person that I with? Am I happy with the inner work that I have done? 2020 was necessary. I'm just going to say that right now. I agree. (laughs) I agree. I think it was definitely necessary. And now people have transformed into really wanting that connection, whether they're allowing themselves to immerse in it or not. Like community and connection is something that people are really craving right now. That's why the businesses that cultivate community are skyrocketing so much or the influencers are skyrocketing so much is because they're bringing like-minded people together. And nobody had that during COVID. Everybody was just isolated and alone. And so people are seeking it so much right now. I love that and there are the dogs <laughs> right on cue they're <laughs> right like applauding you <laughs> so to kind of uh, wrap this up the last question that we always ask all of our podcast guests because this is called the know your power podcast when was the moment there might be a couple but yeah. try and find one when was the moment that you knew how powerful you truly were Ooh. i feel like you're gonna have a good answer for this one not to add pressure to the pressure mm. but i'm gonna get emotional okay so when my sister was on her deathbed, to be real and raw, um, growing up, I was her caretaker very much so. She also couldn't speak, and so she had a rare disease that not a lot of people had seen before in the U.S. So she was doing a lot of interviews on news and stuff like that, but wow. because she couldn't speak, I was the person translating for her. And so I was really putting myself out there as I am Danielle's sister. I am I speak for her, Right. And so there was a moment where my sister was on her deathbed. She was kind of in and out of a coma. I was holding her hand and I held her hand and I could tell that it was her time to go. I felt it deep inside me and I didn't want to accept that, but I knew it. And something told me that the reason why she was holding on was she didn't think that my mom would be okay. My parents were divorced and my mom was her main caretaker. And so my mom was with my sister 24 seven. And something told me that my sister did not want to leave knowing that my mom would really struggle with it. And so my mom had walked out of the hospital room to talk to doctors. I was holding her hand and I leaned into her and she was in a coma and I, I whispered in her ear and I was like, everything is going to be okay and I'm going to take care of mom and I'm going to take care of this family. I'm going to share your legacy and it's okay if you need to give up right now. Um, and she squeezed my hand back in her coma. You're going to make me cry. I know I have goosebumps. I'm trying not to cry. Um, but from that moment she passed probably two to three hours afterwards. And, um, what I realized in that moment was I've made a huge promise that I did not know how to freaking fulfill, <laughs> right? She passed and all the emotions hit and I was sitting there in this hotel room and I was watching my mom just completely fall apart on the ground. And I was like, holy shit, like I made a promise to the person that means the absolute most to me that now has no control over whether I fulfill that promise or not, that I would be the best version of myself, that I would do everything I possibly can to provide for myself, to provide for my family, to lift my mom up. Um, And I realized like, I don't have a choice, but to turn this pain into purpose. I don't have a choice, but to step into my power right now. It's a non-negotiable because I made this promise. Um, And so the moment that I took action on that, I think happened time and time again, over time, learning things about myself. But that was the moment where I really realized I need to step into my power. That was beautiful. I have goosebumps <laughs> up the, the wazoo. The goose pimples up in here. That's a really... <laughs> goose pimples. Goose pimples. <laughs> That's an amazing one. Thank you so much for being open enough to share that because yeah, I know that that's really 
really raw and it can be hard to go back there. So thank you. And that was a gift for people listening to hear. Where can people find you and connect with you? Yeah, so uh, my Instagram handle is R-A-C-H-E-L-L-H-A-G-U-E. My name is Rachel with one L, but it was taken, so we're rocking the I changed L's. my name Come too, on. it's okay. <laughs> um, and then my business, if you are a female entrepreneur or you're just a woman that really wants to step into your light in whatever way that looks like, it is the Connect Her Network. So that's www.connecther with a K, connect, and then H-E-R. We'll put everything in the description as well. It'll also be uh, in the description. And I'm too. also looking into all the above. So. <laughs> so yeah, Instagram is where I respond to all my DMs and things. That would be the best place. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank we you really for sharing your story it. with us. Yeah, of course. It was incredible. Thanks for allowing yeah. me a space to do so. Yeah. And as always, guys, we love you all so much, and you are more powerful than you think. Bye. 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 <laughs>